the last video, we found that minimizing the average squared reconstruction error is equivalent to minimizing the projection of the variance of the data when projected onto the subspace that we'll ignore in PCA. In this video, we will exploit this insight and determine an orthonormal basis of the m-dimensional principal subspace. Using the results from earlier, over here, we can write our loss function as the sum j equals m plus 1 to d of bj transpose s times bj, where s is the data covariance matrix. Minimizing this objective requires us to find the orthonormal basis that spans the subspace that we will ignore. And when we have that basis, we take its orthogonal complement as the basis of the principal subspace. Remember that the orthogonal complement of a subspace U consists of all vectors in the original vector space that are orthogonal to every vector in U. Let us start with an example to determine the B vectors. And let's start in two dimensions, where we wish to find a one-dimensional subspace such that the variance of the data when projected onto that subspace is minimized. So we're looking at two basis vectors, B1 and B2 in R2. So B1 and B2. And B1 will be spanning the principal subspace and B2 its orthogonal complement. That means the subspace that we will ignore. We also have the constraint that B1 and B2 are orthonormal, which means that Bi transpose times Bj is delta Ij, meaning that this dot product is 1 if i equals j and 0 otherwise. In our example with our two vectors, our loss function is j is b2 transpose times s times b2 with the constraint that b2 transpose times b2 is 1. To solve this optimization problem, we write down the Lagrangian, and the Lagrangian is b2 transpose s b2 plus lambda times 1 minus b2 transpose times b2, where lambda is the Lagrange multiplier. So now we compute the gradients of the Lagrangian with respect to b2 and with respect to lambda and set them to 0. So dl d lambda is 1 minus b2 transpose times b2, and this is 0 if and only if b2 transpose times b2 is 1. So we recover our constraint. So now let's have a look at the partial derivative of L with respect to b2. So we get 2b2 transpose times s from the first term, and minus 2 lambda b2 transpose from the second term. And this needs to be 0, and that is 0 if and only if s times b2 is lambda times b2. Here we end up with an eigenvalue problem. b2 is an eigenvector of the data covariance matrix, and the Lagrange multiplier plays the role of the corresponding eigenvalue. If we now go back to our loss function, we can use this expression. We can write j, which was b2 transpose times s times b2. Now we know that s times b2 can be written as lambda times b2. So we get b2 transpose times b2 times lambda. And because we have an orthonormal basis, we end up with lambda as our loss function. Therefore, the average squared reconstruction error is minimized if lambda is the smallest eigenvalue of the data covariance matrix. And that means we need to choose B2 as the corresponding eigenvector, and that one will span the subspace that we will ignore. B1, which spans the principal subspace, is then the eigenvector that belongs to the largest eigenvalue of the data covariance matrix. 
Keep in mind that the eigenvectors of the covariance matrix are already orthogonal to each other because of the symmetry of the covariance matrix. So if we look at a two-dimensional example, if this is our data, then the best projection that we can get that retains most information is the one that projects onto the subspace that is spanned by the eigenvector of the data covariance matrix which belongs to the largest eigenvalue. And that is indicated by this long arrow over here. Now let's go to the general case. If we want to find the m-dimensional principal subspace of a d-dimensional data set and we solve for the basis vectors bj where j equals m plus 1 to d, we optimize these ones, we end up with the same kind of eigenvalue problems that we had earlier with a simple example. We end up with s times bj equals lambda j times bj for j equals m plus 1 to d. And the loss function is given by the sum of the corresponding eigenvalues. So we can write j is the sum from m plus 1 to d of all lambda j. Also in the general case, the average reconstruction error is minimized if we choose the basis vectors that span the ignored subspace to be the eigenvectors of the data covariance matrix that belong to the smallest eigenvalues. This equivalently means that the principal subspace is spanned by the eigenvectors belonging to the m largest eigenvalues of the data covariance matrix. This nicely aligns with properties of the covariance matrix. The eigenvectors of the covariance matrix are orthogonal to each other because of symmetry, and the eigenvector belonging to the largest eigenvalue points in the direction of the data with the largest variance, and the variance in that direction is given by the corresponding eigenvalue. Similarly, the eigenvector belonging to the second largest eigenvalue points in the direction of the second largest variance of the data, and so on. In this video, we identified the orthonormal basis of the principal subspace as the eigenvectors of the data covariance matrix that are associated with the largest eigenvalues. In the next video, we will put all the pieces together and run through the PCA algorithm in detail.